the most consistent customer is this like 55, 56 years old auntie. Okay. She doesn't talk to us. But every day, let's say 5 o'clock to 5.30, uh, she will come and order a double cheeseburger yeah. to eat with her bubble tea to watch her show for 40 minutes. Wow, just sit there. Yes, you just sit there. Yeah. So I until today, right, because she don't she don't really interact with us. Okay. We also don't want to intrude to her private correct, space. Correct. Right? She's watching her show. Uh, so she's watching yeah, her yeah. show. For all you know, maybe she had a long day. She just yeah, wants yeah, to correct, enjoy correct. her burger. But it's this kind of thing that tell me that why why this auntie specifically come all the way here? I don't care where she stay. Like. Yeah. Why do you take the leave, come to fourth floor, order the double cheeseburger every single day? Yeah, and sit there for 40 minutes. And sit there for 40 minutes. So it is something that I feel beyond whether my food is good or not. Right, yeah. but it provides something else for customers. Okay. What advice do you have for other aspiring like F and B entrepreneurs? Advice, uh, don't try. <laughs> <laughs> don't try. <laughs>Hey guys and welcome to yet another episode of the Singaplex After Hours podcast and today we have Tommy from the very famous <laughs> NBCB Cheeseburger. Just, just. <laughs> so Tommy, why the name NBCB? Uh, it came out actually from the, from the pandemic. Ma. So that time my wife was pregnant. So what happened was that I keep tapawing food for her ma. Keep so, tapawing food yeah, yeah, keep tapawing food for her Then she somehow have this craving for cheeseburger la. Yes Then you know, because I stay at Tampanese Yes I keep having to go jewel ma. So at some point I'm a bit pissed off la. So yeah. one fine day, I ask her, she say Oh, nothing la. I just want to eat cheeseburger la. Yeah So I decided, you know what I don't want to keep tapawing That's why I try la, you know, make yeah. my own burger version yes. Then once the R&D part was done come to the naming but mm. it was quite normal because I'm big man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then MBCB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just nice like, like this conversation came about. Hit me lah. Then I'm like nothing but cheese. cheese like, like, the naming to, right here. Yeah, yeah, then it became became this lah. Yeah. Because I think the, the name is quite uh, legendary. Yeah. <laughs> I see it, I was uh, like what what's this uh, cheeseburger yeah, store? Yeah lah, yeah. I mean it's is is uh for for so called social media. <laughs> That, that initial impact, impact people see, yeah. Yeah. they but remember, right? They will remember. End of the day, marketing is about yes, keeping yes, the yes. brand in a... You know, legend has it, you started as a home-based business and, and you actually experimented with your own beef patties. Yeah, so from the very basic means, go to supermarket, just buy random patty. As random in, uh, patty? Ra- random patty like to maybe I start to buy mincemeat mm. and do my own seasoning. Then, you know, you go to Google, go to YouTube. You went read up about uh, different type of restaurant. They do different type of meat uh, calibration. Yeah. Then that's where we, we I I started to experiment uh, to oh, a okay. point where I would say it's the best. I would say that it's something that is suitable for me and my wife uh, the better. Your taste better. Yeah. yeah. So what, what was like some of the challenge when you experiment with like um the meat patties at home uh in a you know, home environment mm, like especially when people started to order more. Actually, the the ordering part is can control and oh, okay. you, you decide how many you want to sell that particular week. Mm. I think the biggest challenge is because you start from ground zero, you don't know anything. You to to a to a normal person who eat beef, you can't tell the difference between shoulder and, and rum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Don't say stick lah, yeah. say means yeah. la, you wouldn't know anything. Ma. So it's really about maybe understanding a bit of the science behind why, you know, there's this Frankenstein patty, patty. that is quite uh, Tasty. common now okay. la, right? ah, the okay. trend so a lot of uh, gourmet chef mm. not me la, gourmet chef they teach on YouTube is how they are they going to make something that got taste got texture got juiciness got everything okay. la. the demand for food quality is high so people's expectation is higher so you have to work with all all uh, senses la. last oh, time you eat it's just okay. nice or not nice la, yeah, right? okay. now also have to look good look good have to the texture have to be good and things like that. Like. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, our eating standard has gone to the ultra first world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. is lah. But I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah. Because then you know, once there's many layers, uh, mm. uh, you can choose where you want to feed yourself in. Mm, uh. In the past, it's just either high end food or low end food. Correct, correct. So high end food is the barrier of entry is very high mm. because that requires not just money, it requires a lot of knowledge. Mm. So. Some people who do not have the experience uh, might not want to enter that sphere. Mm. But then for lower end, I won't say lower end, uh, I say mass, 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 mass market yeah. food, uh, 
because the the margin is so low, mm. it does not entice people to enter. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the difficulty of all F and B. I mean, different F and B will have their their challenges. Challenges. So for high end one, it's more to about you know differentiating themselves. Right, even with the price point they are at, uh, mm. there's a lot of competitors. Yes, yes, right. Yes. Let's say for example Omakase. Yeah. There's a lot. Uh. So either they fight on brand, fight on the the, the, the celebrity status of the share, yes, yes. or the quality of the food. Yeah, yeah. But you know, there must be some sort of selling yeah, some point. Some kind of signature yeah. dish. Yeah, yeah, some sort that yeah. is signature to, to themselves. Uh. Mm. Whereas for the mass market, then it's about you know whether the flavor match the person that is eating yeah, yeah. and then is there enough people coming through the door through to the eat door their food yeah. so that's why your hopes for the local like F&B scene in general actually I feel that uh, F&B in Singapore other than you know maybe higher end restaurants uh, the, the the people are the job itself is or the career itself is not something that most people would aspire to mm. be la. whereas overseas uh, yeah. there is like you know, prestigious culinary school, yeah. people want to enter, people fight oh, to yeah. enter, right? In Singapore, you know, I can only think of Shatek. Yeah. And unfortunately, the 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 impression is, oh, you come from Shatek, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no prestige, prestige in it, yeah, yeah. right? So it will, it will accumulate into the, the market thinking that, you know, F&B is a, is a low paying job. Mm. It's a career with, no progression whether is it front of house or back of house mm. which is why maybe you know a lot of singaporeans wouldn't want to venture in that career in that or direction. in that business and also how the market treats people in f and mm. yeah mm. that's that's what i feel la. so mm. if you ask me what aspiration i have is that maybe in a way i can put more spotlight on my guys and put more more human humanness into the business. Yeah, the, the, the faces behind F and B. Yeah, so that is what I'm actually trying to do. And also, you know, I see a lot of this same F and B business trying to do that. Like, last time it's always the brand, the brand. Correct, you don't correct, know who is correct. the share. Yeah, yeah. You don't know who is the cashier. You don't know who is the people behind the operation. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So other than like um, human stuffing, um, rent is a major issue, right? So how would you approach it personally? How or how have you like overcome this factor? Mm, I think that uh, in any business, uh, there is always this ultimate entire cost. To start any F&B business, anywhere in Singapore, you need 500000 Wow. Let's say, for example, anywhere, la, right? From the most expensive or rather expensive place to the cheap place, yeah. you range from fifty to 500000 okay. But you know 500000 can get you somewhere. Okay. Right? Okay. Already one of the better yeah. already. But with this sum of money and where you intend to open and what you want to sell, right, there is still some constraint, meaning to say that you don't want to burst this 500000 right. Same yeah. as Hawker Centre. Hawker Centre, yeah. let's say 50 k As much as possible, you want to spend lower than 50 k not yeah, lower than yeah. 50 k right? So there's this ultimate constraint that you have, right? But there's so many elements like rental, la, uh, equipment, la, reno, la, manpower costs, you know, all the, exact, all the costs that is involved. No matter where you minus, right, something has to give, man. Right. Yeah, yeah, correct. So correct. a lot of people will give, will, will, will consider sacrificing maybe the higher cost item. Okay. Yeah, so equipment, some people choose second hand equipment. Mm. Renter, maybe they choose a place that uh, might not be so relevant or maybe their third choice. Oh, because when we find renter, yeah, we find yeah. maybe 10 different places. Yeah. Then we say, okay, first one too expensive, second one, third one, maybe fifth choice. Like, yeah. Right? But that fifth choice comes with uh, sacrifice more. Maybe sacrifice food for, mm. maybe sacrifice because that mall is not so well known for F and B. Mm. People don't go there to eat. Yeah, all, all that kind of issue. All the factors, right? right? Yeah. So personally, I feel that I chosen places where uh, the sacrifice is worth, worth, you know, the, worth the, the saving that the I save lah. You know, way lah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because a lot of people ask me, hey, why don't open Japanese mall? Why don't mm. open Jam? Why yeah. don't open like you know all the A one malls? Yeah. But you know. The difference could be two, three times. The cost. The cost. For wow, renter wow. could be two, three times. And at my current juncture, it's, it's just not sensible to mm-hmm. spend the money that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't call it a spending. Yeah. Renter, the biggest thing is what? Not the every month you have to pay, it's the upfront deposit. Ah. So assuming you go to a A1 mall, yeah. based on my average restaurant size of, let's say, 1002 to 1004, it could easily be 40, 50, 60, 70,000, depending on location. Wow. Right, so seventy thousand times three, 
because you have to pay three months deposit is two hundred ten thousand. Then you have to pay one month advance rental. So that's another side. So two eighty thousand. Two hundred eighty thousand uh, for doing nothing. Yeah. Just sit at the mall there so that you secure your spot. Wow. So, yeah. Versus wow. say if you go to a place that is not A1 mall, yeah. right? Like maybe a smaller mall, uh, not so populated area mall, maybe the rental could be fifteen thousand. Okay, right? okay. So the entire four yeah. X could be less than ninety K. Mm. It's workable. It's workable. You still have yeah. a, at least a some short, buffer left. Yeah, hundred plus thousand dollar. Right? Yeah. That's why I went to went to re- went to a renovation. Yeah, went to buying better equipment so that you won't have operational issue for a good nine months, one year, mm. things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it really depends on the budget, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so tell me, what advice do you have for other aspiring like F and B entrepreneurs? Advice. Uh, don't try. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try. <laughs> Too stressful. Sometimes I got question myself la, like, like what am I doing? Like, like, Why am I spending all this time doing all these things uh, yeah, for yeah. a 20, 30 percent margin? Yeah, yeah. And it's correct. not guaranteed one. Correct, correct, correct. As a F and B, okay, I'll just put it as a F and B, especially let's say you are a small owner, you are not a chain owner, mm. and you are not backed by big investment company, mm. right? You 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 are at the mercy of so many things. Mm. You are at the mercy of the mall, you are at the mercy of the market, you are at the mercy of your staff, you are at the mercy of the consumer. Also, mm. the most important one is the supplier. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have the volume to to sit on the same table as them to negotiate. Correct. Correct. So, they open what price means you have to take. Correct. Yeah. Then, you don't have the rigor room in terms of margin uh, to absorb, let's say, GST. For example, GST yeah. going to increase, right? Yeah. So, if in the case where I become a GST registered, registered yeah. company, right? Do I have to absorb the GST and reduce ah, my margin? Okay. Do I want to mm. uh, load that GST to customer? Mm. Maybe my price point right now, if I were to increase it by five percent, most people will turn away. Mm. Right. Mm. So there's a lot of aspect that mm. I have to consider. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So of course, every business got risk yeah. But I mean, if one thing people want to know, I would think that. You know, it's all this decision that yeah. you know, it's really gut feel. Right? You you, mm. you don't know because you, you can't foresee. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So so advice wise I think you have to put a lot of a lot of thing is your own gut feeling, right? mm. really. So if you have a very good gut feel, sometimes you will question yourself. But like I say like, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You, know, you try like, mm. as long as it's within your budget, like, yeah, yeah. true. Um what were you would say the top three challenges you faced initially when you started the brand? I think uh, the main number one thing is is credibility because of how the name is also. Yeah. Right? Most people will think that it's a one trick pony, la, yeah. right? just using the brand name to Correct. draw a crowd. Yeah. But then you know, most people will think that fast food you sell a $10, $15 burger, yeah. who are you? Yeah. Right? Why are you selling Shake Shack price? Why are you yeah, Shake Shack price? Yeah. Why are you selling a uh, Five Guys price? Who Correct. are you, mm. right? And F and B being F and B, right? If you have a retention rate of 40 percent uh, of customers, is very good already. Mm. So you get bombarded a lot by very negative comments, la, Right. But the people that support you are uh, is they don't talk, man. You yeah. will see them come back two, three times a yeah, week. They, they don't comment, they don't do it. Yeah, they don't say anything. Yeah. In fact, I tell you a funny story. You know, in Orchard, uh, yeah. in Orchard branch, uh, the biggest, not say the biggest, uh, the most consistent customer is this like 55, 56 years old auntie. Okay. She doesn't talk to us. But every day, let's say 5 o'clock to 5 30, uh, she will come and order a double cheeseburger yeah. to eat with her bubble tea to watch her show for 40 minutes. She'll wow, just sit yes, you just sit there. Yeah. So I until today, right? Because she don't she don't really interact with us. Okay. We also don't want to intrude to her private correct, space. Correct. Right? She's watching her show. Uh, so she's watching yeah. her show. For all you know, maybe she had a long day, she just yeah, wants yeah, to correct, enjoy correct. her burger. But it's this kind of thing that tell me that why why this auntie specifically come all the way here? I don't care where she stay. Yeah, yeah. Why do you take the leave, come to fourth floor, order the double cheeseburger every single day? Yeah, and sit there for 40 minutes. And sit there for 40 minutes. So it is something that I feel beyond whether my food is good or not, right? Yeah. But it provides something else for customers, man. Okay. Yeah. Then, of course, you know, I have customers that tell me, you know, my food is good. There are customers that tell me my food is one of the better one. There are customers that tell me that hey, your food like shit, like. Yeah. Right? So 
you have the full spectrum. You have to you have to you have to navigate through all these things, right? Because there's a lot of self doubt, man. Especially your new business. Every time a negative review come in, uh, right? Especially a negative review with no constructive feedback, man. Mm-hmm. Means, uh, your business sucks. Yeah, there, there's no like uh, why. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I ask you why. You say no lah, just sucks. Like you don't even give me a chance yeah, to change, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Then at some point, I need to tell myself, okay, this type of of feedback, feedback, yeah. I'm gonna ignore. Correct. Then, but I'm gonna put a lot of focus on customer. Then give me operational feedback and specific feedback. Mm. But then specific feedback also. You have to, you have to filter a bit, mm. because some people will say like, oh, your patty too salty. Some mm. people will say your patty too bland. <laughs> you are like, where is the balance? Yeah, but I face that problem. So every time someone come and tell me your patty too salty, I will tell my chef to lessen the seasoning. Yeah, yeah. Then the patty too bland come in. Correct. Then correct, I correct. add a bit more. So it's every day. You sure, have one bland, one non bland, one <laughs> yeah, bland, one non bland. Yeah. Until you confuse, you don't yeah, know what to true, do. True, true, true. So at some point, I need to stop myself because my chef also pick check. Yeah, yeah. I say, correct, hey, so correct. what, what, what formula you want to use? Correct. So correct, I told correct. them, okay, never mind. You come out with three, mm. or the whole team taste test. We choose the one with most people vote. So ah, we start with that. Okay. Yeah. So that's problem solving lah. Problem solving. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also a risk law. But so okay. far, I still face the same problem, as in customer feedback feedbacking to me both both different. Both level, different. Right? But to me, is I can I can be in peace lah. No <laughs> you can be in peace. I can be in peace. <laughs> you done your job. You did, yeah, did the, the best you could. Yeah, yeah, because even like big brand like Apple yeah, also yeah. got people say their phones. Yeah, why the phone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also criticism is always there. Right? Yeah, yeah. right, there's no perfect product. Mm. So it took me a while to understand that there is no perfect product. It just has to be perfect for the person that is buying. Why, right? Yeah. yeah, true, true, true. Um, you have a pretty personally, you have a pretty interesting uh, TikTok account. Mm. What made you um comment on news happenings and what made you decide to push out such content? Mm, actually, when I started the TikTok, the TikTok was registered like seven months ago okay. when I started the the NBC the company. Yeah, it was intended to be as a just social media for me to push out my advertorials lah. Like. Mm. But then we neglected it because that time was during the setting up, so it was quite busy. So we only focused on Instagram and Facebook. So TikTok was just there for me to look at girls, lah, right? That was mostly what people <laughs> yeah, yeah, TikTok for, right? right? Yeah, yeah, look okay. at girls, you know, see people sing songs, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff, lah. So when I opened the restaurant, uh, there's this another influencer, Simon Boy, lah. So he's a close friend of mine, lah. So he came down to eat. Oh. So I was I was chit chatting with him yeah. la, because I was wondering like hey how come suddenly you become so prominent? Mm. So he was quite nice. He also shared with me la, right? He said that you know TikTok is a very good platform for you know aspiring mm. let's say marketer Correct. or whoever that wants to, you know, deliver something mm. because it's very organic in terms of his viewership. Mm. So I, I was thinking like oh, okay, la, you know, I will try. Mm. So I tried. Initially it was brand focused. Mm. So uh, my earlier videos Post, right, yeah, is, yeah. is more for the brand. Correct. But then I realized that uh, yeah, nobody, even me, I also won't go and watch advertisement. Yeah. Right? So why do I expect people to watch advertisement? Correct. Right. Then Simon Boyle kind of told me again, okay, you know now these people like to see personality. They don't like to see brands. Mm. Because brand is, is just a brand, it's just a word. Correct. Right? Even motto, slogan, it's just something. Right? But they want to see the people. Mm. So they say, maybe you should showcase yourself. Then I say, but I'm not someone who has been in front of camera. Yeah. Right. Most of the time, most of the work and the businesses that I do, I don't have to be in front of the yeah, camera. Yeah, behind the scenes. Eh? Yeah, I'm just running the business lah. So he said, no, just try. If it works, it works lah. If it doesn't work, what harm can you do? Mm-hmm. No difference. No thing, difference. Right? So I said, okay, but I don't know what to do. Mm. So he said, bro, very easy one, right? Because he has his story. So yeah. for him to do that thing, right, it's very natural. Mm. That means he's he's a drug experience, he's prison experience, yeah. things like that. Right. So for me is I have a different set of interests, man. Yeah. Right. But he knows the way I talk can be a bit comical la, yeah. in a way. So he say, why don't you use your style of talking to co- to express your idea on, on current issue? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I said, okay, la, I give it a shot. But of course it was experimenting like at the start was maybe yeah, a yeah. bit more more gentler, more uh uh, manner, yeah, yeah. better manners. Yeah. Then as I go along, I realize that a hey, people like this style, people like that style. I adjust a bit to the audience that yeah. are watching. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Very interesting. Great videos, by the way. <laughs> so, have you considered doing more comedy content? Actually, right now, I will say that luckily, people can appreciate lah. As in, the audience so far can appreciate what I'm doing. 
So of course there are people uh, giving me advice to do certain things, certain things. Mm. But and comedy will be something that I'm interested in, because yeah. from young is I watch Zhou Xingqi all this, yeah. So it's something that I like, and so far I think people think I'm funny lah. Mm. Right? So true, true, true. I will focus more on that path lah. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, Tommy. <laughs> So we've seen also a video on TikTok whereby you are at the grill making a burger yourself. Are you also once in a while that hands on? Uh, to be honest, other than the first one and a half month, yeah. I'm no longer in the kitchen. Mm. The reason why I'm no longer in the kitchen is because I'm not qualified to be in the kitchen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was never a chef. Man. Yeah. At best, I'm a home cook. Yeah. Right. So I would leave the cooking to the professionals. professionals yes. Yeah. And while now the brand is synonymous with me. Then I do a lot of the marketing, brand building, business development mm. part of the business, like mm. yeah. Mm. So um, there's a famous like hot dog eating filter <laughs> go around these days on TikTok, right? What are you going to make a uh, maybe a NBCB burger eating filter? Uh, I see marketing in a different way, like. Okay. I like it to be to be spontaneous. I don't like to to push force content For, yeah, out yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. So. Maybe lah, I see lah. Maybe in my marketing people they are free, free then right, yeah, yeah, go yeah. and do something lah, right? But generally, a lot of the things that I'm doing right now is based on feeling. Okay. Yeah. So if you feel there's a like a right right piece of messaging, then you push it out. Yeah, because mm. while I give my my comments, I also don't want to force my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of marketing, I would like the awareness, but I would never say things like you know. I number one yeah, or yeah. I'm best at what I never say this kind yeah. of thing. I just want you to know that I own this joint. If you happen to walk by, you eat long. Yeah. If you like, I say thank you. You don't like, I also say thanks for trying. Yeah. So this has always been my message. In Singapore, you know, there are many famous hawkers or family run stores that tend to close after their founder retires. Huh? Do you think like we are now at the risk of losing some of our like heritage? In, in fact, in I Singapore. Do, yes. I feel, feel I right. feel that uh all this, uh, how I put it, hi, I will consider local food. Uh, mm. No matter how simple it looks, uh, it requires a craft, high level right, of yeah, skill. Yeah. So it, it itself is an art craft. Mm. Right? But art craft requires a long time to master, acquire and master, master the skill set. But why would you want to master the skill set if number one, there is no prestige, number two, you are not even look up? To mm. then you know the pay is like ridiculous. Yeah, the yeah. hours is long. Long, right? Yeah. Not like you are uh, Gordon Ramsay. You, know, you walk up, people ask you yeah. for signature. Yeah. If you happen to be even let's say the most famous number one in Singapore, Chuck Yeah, that guy walk on the street, nobody knows him. Mm. Right. So there is some element of that which causes this current situation to happen. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, which is why I think it's, it it goes back down to perspective, lah. If mm. let's say if the per perspective can change within the near future, there's still some chance. La. Yeah. But of course, now people are giving their own rendition of things. Yeah. So it may or may not be a good thing. La. But if yeah. you're looking yeah. for nostalgia, I think after the next five to eight years, uh, a lot of things will disappear. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a pretty uh, big thing. And also maybe the consumer, they need to be realistic. Do you think like maybe that sometimes the auntie increased by 50 cents, right? And people like, what? In fact, I tell you, uh, <laughs> Based on my own personal experience, yeah. uh, because I'm running a low margin business, Correct. so I won't I won't talk for the more atas yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you are talking about local normal hawker center or this, uh, their margin, let's say chak kway teow uh, mm. per plate, if they can have like a fifty cent to eighty cent, let's say one dollar margin, uh, wow. is considered very good already. Wow. Right, but for you to achieve that margin, uh, you need volume. Yes. Yeah. So. Volume means that they probably need to sell 300 plate, 400 plate a day, a day yeah. non-stop. Mm, wow. Any day with less than that 400 plate uh, is going to eat into the whole month's margin. Oh, yeah, wow. It will drop yeah, yeah, yeah. quite a bit. Right? So I give you an example. Assuming you can sell, I can sell 200 burgers a day. Yeah. right? And uh, my margin is, let's, let's put it at, at 20%. So assuming one day right, I can make 300 bucks, yeah. right? 300, 400 bucks. Right? Over... 30 days is 12,000. Yeah. All I need is like every week, uh, one day that goes instead, down. Instead of 200 burger, I sell say 110, 115. Because oh. let's say rain, yeah, uh, yeah, people correct, go correct. holiday. Uh, the margin, the, the 12,000 will suddenly drop to become 10, become 8. Oh. Something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So 
it is a very yeah, volatile yeah, business. Yeah. People don't understand lah. You mm. know what I mean? Because sometimes you go got queue. Yeah. But maybe other day no queue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then you think that hey, maybe I won't go lah, because maybe today probably will queue. Yeah. It affects the business the business kilo quite oh, quite yeah, a yeah, bit lah. Quite la, a right? roller coaster. Quite, yeah. Roller coaster. Yeah. Then since at such a poor margin, mm. then they want to raise price also cannot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But then how many hawker center absorb GST? Almost every hawker center absorb GST. Have you seen you pay GST on food no. hawker food? Don't have much, yeah. right? But then they are not allowed to raise price even. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. When they raise the resistance is very high. Yeah. Yeah, people don't see lah, which I can understand because most consumer you want you don't even know the numbers behind yeah, the business, right, right, right. Why would you bother? To yeah. you is your own pocket, why do I have to take out yeah, another fifty right. cent? But to that business owner, uh, it could be life and death situation. Mm. Uh, it could be one more staff or no more staff. That kind of situation. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. wow. the fifty cent adds up. Adds up, right? Yeah. So what are some of the now you feel other like F and B places uh, people should check out in Singapore? Mm, I I I don't have the name above my head. Yeah. On top of my head, but I think that uh, especially on eight days la, those there's so a lot those of featured those yeah. featured one uh, yeah. To me is. Every shop should be at least tried once, and every Singaporean should make it an endeavor uh, to try to try every shop in Singapore once. One time, yeah, yeah. because you never know what you would like. True, true. You know what I mean. Yeah. But there are going to be those shops that, no matter how famous, uh, you wouldn't know one uh, because it could be the gem of the West. Uh, but then you don't, you're not in that area. I'm not even there. Yeah, why yeah. would I even know? Right, yeah, yeah. and no matter how influential certain website or web page will be, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, it yeah. might not reach me, ma. True, true. Right, so I would think that you know, give every shop a try, mm. Yeah, you will never know whether you find something that mm. that you like, that right? You yeah. Like, yeah, you could have three favorite chocolate store. Yeah, one in the east, one in the west, one in the just nice, right, right? Wherever you are, yeah. it's possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If you could, you know, only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would that be? I would eat like those uh, Hainanese curry rice. I like it's curry yeah, rice. Um, personally, I eat it since I grew up. Uh. Yeah. yeah. To me, because it has variety, then the base is something that I am very comfortable with. Mm. So like those Thai fun store, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's something that I wouldn't mind eat forever. Forever, forever. I am a rice eater. You're rice yeah, eater. I would prefer rice. Truly over Asian. Asian. Yeah. <laughs> so, truly Asian. Uh, like I really enjoy rice. Yeah, correct, Even correct. people tell me like, High sugar, high right. sugar. <laughs> I rather die eating rice. Yeah, la, rather than die not eating rice, la, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you only live once, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True, true. As a creative entrepreneur, what's your dream project? I think my dream project right now uh, is to combine co- uh, both element of for myself, la, personally. What I can do in terms of media content mm. with my my food business okay. and being able to combine them combine sim- both, sim- right. seamlessly. Sure. So one good thing is that more or less people that follow me la, mm. right? They, they they know that you know both both are me. So mm. that the personality and the business both are me. Mm. Right? But I'm still trying to find a way how can I you know merge merge the business uh, mm. to a point where I can not just provide food, I can also provide Pleasure. Pleasure, yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah. kind of entertainment. Yeah, then because I think like food requires creativity, mm. but uh, media entertainment requires some sort of satisfaction. Mm. So both sides can complement each, each other. Yeah. yeah. Right now, I don't really have the right plan, mm. which is mm. why it's the fun stage because you get to yeah. ex- experiment everything. Yeah. What about other than food? What's your favorite drink? Uh, kopi. Kopi, right? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple. Yeah, right? I, I, I enjoy kopi. Daily sustenance. I drink quite a bit, seven, eight cups a day. Well, that's quite a lot. Yeah, that's I drink a lot. lot yeah. What the world needs now is. I think the world needs now. <laughs> it's gonna cancel. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> saying, <laughs> Everyone needs more resilience. More resilience. Yes. Okay. I don't know whether the word resilience is the right word. Oh, okay. But okay. I think there was no such thing as. Uh, being understanding la, during yeah. my parents' era, my era. Yeah, yeah. You can call me old school on certain ideas. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it's, uh, you are only offended if you are offended. Oh, okay, I get what I mean. Yeah, 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 if yeah, you are so not, true. then if you are bulletproof, yeah. then nothing can offend you. True, true. You know, in fact, the person that is trying to offend you will end up getting offended <laughs> because they don't get the attention they get. Ah. Right. But nowadays, because Social the, media, the, right? the world, people can be, I wouldn't say sensitive, mm. but 
they are spring loaded. Yeah, okay, so okay, every okay. time they see or hear something that just a bit like, trigger, uh, yeah, then yeah. they pull like that, really, okay. right? Then that reaction is usually somewhat supported. Mm, that, mm. that that reaction to something that is negative uh, mm. is supported. So you are you are enabling the reaction mm, mm, but mm, mm. you know maybe we got go army before yeah, yeah. every day you cannot yeah, by the same yeah, yeah, yeah. father say your mother father then mother yeah, everyone also say man. but to you it was quite funny yeah, yeah, right? even if it was you like, yeah, people yeah. laughing you know like, oh, what the hell I don't yeah, care because yeah. okay. you're too tired anyway right? yeah so but we built the resilience man. Mm. so to me is uh, if if the world can be a bit more resilient uh, resilient mm. it means Lesser thing will happen. Yeah, Everyone yeah. will just do their own thing. They'll carry on with life. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I feel like. That's yeah. what I feel. Okay, like. okay. The internet is one big. The internet is one big treasure, man. Yeah. We were born in a time when there was no internet, man. There's no internet, right? Yeah, correct. Right. That's internet, true. We 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 experienced before like the dark more than we we, we experienced <laughs> the dark ages. Yeah, the dark ages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we experiment. We were inside. The, the half fuck matrix. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the unreliable. Slow, slow, yeah. No, you got the internet, right? It's not for information. Eh. It's just correct, to correct. connect with people. Eh. Correct. The information stage only came after. Na. Yeah. Right, after 2000 something. Yes. Where yes. Google start to ramp up. Correct. Wikipedia start to come up. That's where information start to become ramped up. Explode. Eh, right? Everything. But we were at the stage where we were only in our own bubble. Eh. Yeah. Right? So we don't even know outside of what thing. Correct. What kind of things we can explore, what we can what new ideas we can understand, you know, what new stuff we can try. Then we were at a stage where we don't even know what internet could do. Mm. Right? A lot of things is like Ellie Fairy, people say can do this, can do that, say can man, can <laughs> <be, right? laughs> Fifteen years ago you wouldn't think like what can can watch video man. Yeah. One video look thirty minutes. I'm <laughs> yeah. ready to watch video. Can hear can listen song very good. Yeah. Right? Last time RC you want to download download yeah, song. Yeah. Right? The whole album take three days. Yeah, 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 if you disconnect, yeah. uh, you well, yeah, yeah. damn to like, right? yeah, <laughs> now oh, yeah, those are uh, true dark right? ages, right? Yeah. Time, now you download movie like yeah, that. Yeah. Done, now yeah. not take one, for granted. Right? One gigabyte finish, oh, yeah. uh, within few minutes. You go on toilet, come back, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. That was the that's the progress. Eh. Right? So in the internet, the space uh, it's like universe, eh. it's just keep expanding, expanding, yeah. expanding. Mm-hmm. You don't know there's no end one. Uh. Where the end will be. Right? Yeah, then, <laughs> It is one big treasure map. You don't know where is the treasure at all, right? For all you know, you are the one that discover the next biggest thing. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is one big treasure map to me, lah. Uh, but I'm still, I'm mixed. So I'm yeah. still a bit old school. Yeah. But I also want to try new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. So guys, the internet is one big treasure map. From the founder Tommy <laughs> of NBCB Burger, yeah, right? <laughs> and if you like this, uh, please uh, remember to like, like and subscribe and that keeps our content going. Until next time, this has been yet another episode of the Singaplex After Hours Podcast. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah.